And what's up, everybody? What up, Winter Clash? Hey, how welcome you doing? to Jump Street episode welcome. 140. <laughs> yeah, we go. So we are at uh, episode 140 right now. We haven't been here since 2020 when we did some live episodes last time. We had a few on this one, and we are ending it with Mills Jansons, and we're very happy to have you on. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's uh, honestly a big honor. I'm a big fan of the podcast, and uh, yeah, it's it's truly. You guys been inspiring uh, me for skating since uh, like back in the day, and then doing Jump Street. It's I feel it's uh, such an important uh, piece of the culture to have this to have where. The youth, me, can learn from the older guys and uh, know where we're coming from because uh, keeping this culture and keeping the history alive and uh, passing it on to the next generations, it's, it's crucial for, uh, for the, the growth of the culture and the future. And uh, yeah, I just want to say, you guys, I appreciate what you're doing. I'm a big fan and uh, yeah, it's, yeah uh, it's beautiful. So big honor. Thank you. Thank hey, you. we appreciate that. Thank you very hey. much. We appreciate all you do, too. You do a lot for the community, too. And it's, we've seen you all grow up from like a little kid, too, to being who you are now, which we'll get into in this whole uh, podcast, too. So we're kind of going full, full circle here. Yeah, you've had like a long storied skate career. I remember back in the day we were on a heat and skate tour, which was like, I think, over 15 years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, or at least a close something close over 10. But um, and now you've come all the way to do the parts you've done last year, do everything you've done last year, Blade Cups, Skater of the Year, all this stuff. Um, but as always, when we have a new guest on, I'm always curious about like their origins, how they've started. Um, I know you're from Latvia, and I'm not sure what the scene was like back then, but if you were like part of the first generation or a second mm -hmm. generation of skaters from that area. But how did you uh, discover rollerblading and find out that it was a big part of who you are? Mm. Thank you. Yeah, it's been truly a, a blessing to live this journey this far and uh, um, the, the origins. I was born in 1992 in Latvia, which is a post uh, Soviet Union country. So basically when I was a little baby, I was not even aware that uh, I'm one of the first generations to live fully in a, a free world that is kind of open <laughs> to, to experience the Western culture where the blading comes from and uh, yeah, a big part of everything is definitely family. The support that my family worked uh, super hard, and I know how how uh, their life was much more tough, and my grandparents was way more tough than I get to experience life. So that makes me appreciate all the opportunities I've received from my parents, working hard and just making sure that uh, I can go to a nice school, experience different sports, see the world, and because for my grandparents, that wasn't the case, you know, it wasn't like, ah, oh, let's go Thailand, let's go see how United Kingdom is like. It right. was, uh, the world was, uh, it was communism, you know, and uh, even today, seeing things going on in Ukraine, it's just disgusting. And uh, the whole Latvia really feels for that because that's what uh, my grandparents have went through, being like occupied. So uh, it's just uh, important to appreciate what we have and... Uh, that's a big part of uh, just of things that I didn't choose, you know, to be born in a free country. So it's uh, one of the things I can appreciate every single day, and uh, it's only what what gave me chance to to skate. And that's because of my brother. He's sitting here in the front line as well, and uh, he's he's pretty much uh, the reason why because. Uh, We've always had chance to experience sports, and my parents thought it's important to go play tennis. To It all started for me with hockey as well, learning to skate there, um, doing some boxing for a couple of years as being like eight or nine year old. And uh, but there's always a little too much pressure doing those uh, traditional sports. So uh, when my brother on, uh, on a TV it was probably around 2000, 2001, mm, he, I think, saw X Games, saw Takeshi flying, uh, saw on MTV some contests. So he asked for a pair of blades to the parents. He got them and uh, started skating. And me as a younger kid, I'm six years younger than my brother, I was just uh, like hooked as well. Since I got skates, I started skating and doing whatever my brother was doing because it was him, all the grown-ups, and it was just this rebellious lifestyle of 
be who you are. You don't need to kind of blend in. There's no judge. There's no, I don't know, not even a coach or anything. You just go out. The world's free. Uh, do your thing. Express yourself. You're you're in a battle with yourself. That's it. And uh, uh, that's how it all started, you know. Not even being aware of uh, the industry kind of going down at the time. Because mm. we were watching X Games and we were like, this is it, you know. Yeah. Not even thinking like I'm gonna chase this to maybe achieve something what these guys are doing, but just like later on learning that maybe it was all kind of going down, but actually maybe it's all for good, and uh, we're still here. Maybe my parents were more happy if I was uh, chasing the tennis or golf career as they tried to put us on, but uh, yeah, it's happy to see. Um, my family also supporting and being happy that I found something kind of that uh, just drives me because of the process, you know. Well, you, you've taken it a really long way. You're skating. You've gone like on to be like pretty well known through things in uh, Latvia, like being a part of like the competition organization there and then going on to like just be like kind of world well known through skating. So um, how did that go? Like, how did how is like the reception like in terms of like the the country like responding to the skating and the events there? Uh, it was it was definitely more tough, but it was uh, everything that we knew. We didn't know that hey, it can be different. You can have Woodward indoor skate parks where to practice all winter. You know, for us it was even uh, putting salt on the ground so the ice melts so we can maybe like <laughs> jump those stairs and. Uh, or there was one vert ramp when we started that we need to, it would take like one hour uh, trip to go there. And it was just like a very narrow vert ramp where we just like skate. And it was like, uh, we really just took advantage of what we had, even if it wasn't much. And uh, just uh, just skating and uh, my brother kind of seeing that maybe I'm capable of doing some tricks and uh, kind of progressed quickly in the first years. Then winning my first local contest, like, I don't know, at age uh, 11, maybe. And it was just a joyful process to be out there learning new tricks. And uh, then my brother started filming. And that was also a big motivation and driving force to get out there and, uh, and uh, film. And also, without the filming and uh, the edits, uh, I don't think I would be able to make my name kind of that easily out. We had the Roller News back in the day, kind of super, everyone would be checking out Roller News you know, yeah. and seeing what's happening in the industry. So that was our chance to create those videos and then would people would be like, what is Latvia? Who is this little guy? But we were able to kind of showcase this time of uh, of progression, yeah, through, through video. Yeah, that's true, because you didn't, like, not many big names came out of Latvia. You're, you're the biggest mm -hmm. one. I don't know if there was any generation before you, like Billy S before, and like, those edits they used to put up back in the day were insane too. You just lacing hammers, like this little kid throwing mm -hmm. down hammers and these rims. And it always looked like you were skating by yourself too when you did that. Like you were just throwing these hammers down as like mm -hmm. a little 13 year old kid, 14 year old kid back in the day. Was it like that? Or like, was um, it you and your brother going out filming like that? Also, but that's what we inspired from, you know, watching uh, Dustin Latimer, watching Shima, mm -hmm. um, later on watching Haffy and Aragon, it was a big inspiration. Carlos Pianowski was big inspiration, you know, just such yeah. big drop drop kings. I'm like, yeah, I just <laughs> yeah. want to feel how it is to dry, like grind a drop king. I don't even know why, but uh, it's just some kind of adrenaline and drive to, I don't know, get over your fear and just feel alive, feel super free in the moment. And uh, it's, yeah, it was maybe a little bit too much at some uh, peak levels, just, you know, throwing my body as if, if it was uh, limitless or it's like you cannot rack it. And now I kind of really feel it. And, yeah. uh, appreciate it more than ever and it still performs pretty okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, yeah it's just uh, the inspiration we took was from uh this kind of skating and it wasn't even too conscious but it's kind of felt like if the level of skating allows then i want to take it to bigger spots bigger spots and hopefully eventually if it happens it would be cool if uh, i don't know a sponsor notices me or something but that was never really the goal and it naturally happened that uh, I just, uh, yeah, I was competing a lot. First winter clash I came to was 2007. I was probably 14 years young. And that was a good time where I could like catch some attention as well. 
I was like, here's the spotlight. You know, I have yeah. nothing to lose. I'm like, I had like a cast on my wrist. I had a broken wrist and skating shadows and just like going for, I don't know, like disaster for 50 Royal. Maybe I can do it. Let's just see. Yeah. And it was like, I had to, you know, it was like opportunity to, and I tried to make best out of it. And Damn, you skated your first winter clash with a cast on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had never seen anyone skate a contest with a cast on. Yeah, it was like I had a, like a, I think a broken wrist or something. But yeah. it was like yeah, at that uh, age, it was like you know, uh, broken wrists. You don't skate with your wrist, so it was fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you don't skate with your wrist until you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. until you need it. Um, you just ah, oh, I can just put my elbow down. And yeah, <laughs> take it to the shoulder, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, you were saying like that, like uh, some of these early guys, Shima, Dustin Latimer, and Carlos were uh, influences on your skating and. You could still see that and like that influence in some of your stuff, like big gap to rails, like front siding drop kinks, mm -hmm. like and things like that. And so there are still those elements of that inspiration there. I was going to ask you about like how your lifestyle plays into the skating, because like everyone who anyone who follows you on Instagram knows you like have a very clean lifestyle. You're like taking care of your body. You're even doing like these very cold ice dips in the river and things like that. So where did this uh, inspiration come from to, and how does that affect your skating? Uh, I try, and uh, I try because uh, I love skating so much. I, and I wanna keep doing it for many, many more years because skating has like brought every single person I pretty much know, trust, my wife, and everyone to my life. And uh, it's, uh, it's always been because of the process of skating, and that made me I've had some worse injuries. Like uh, the worst thing has been like torn ACL twice. Oh. And that's like uh, everyone who does sports knows it's like a serious shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also been a blessing, you know, because uh, that skating I did, like hurricane topsailing drop rails and just going for every banger I could see, it's not sustainable. And uh, I had to learn it kind of the hard way. But it also like uh, made me be more, uh, I don't know, uh, aware of my body. You Just know? smarter. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that uh, with the recovery process, I met new people. I met my physiotherapist, who's also a trainer. And she has a very broad perspective on the human body and nature. You know, it's not only physical body. It's like your, your mindset, your everything that kind of affects how... how how well you're performing and how good you feel. So I just started implementing new habits to help myself uh, uh, skate, you know, keep skating, recover faster from those couple injuries that kind of were big turning point to, I don't know, start eating more plant-based. It's also because of like uh, ethical reasons, but at the same time I could like learn that maybe it can help me recover quicker, uh, stretching, warming up. That's what I try to implement in my every session and uh, it's just like, uh, yeah, this body is a very, uh, how do you say, uh, fragile object. And uh, I just learned to not take it for granted and take my time every day to calibrate it and see how it feels. Because it's, it's given me this blessing to live this life, to do those, all, all those tricks, to get those emotions, to, to give those emotions to people at contests. So... It, I feel like it's my responsibility to, to make it last as uh, long as it can so I can just uh, do my service with skating and whatever I choose to do. So, uh, yeah. And Latvia is also a tough environment. You know, we have some winters, we have ice. So it's like instead of uh, getting depressed, you might as well just go cut some ice and jump in the water and feel alive and, oh. uh, <laughs> and make the make, uh, best out of it. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's also part of it. Jeez. So you weren't serious when you were said before, like 10 minutes ago, you want to jump oh, in yeah, the lake. <laughs> oh, my God. You're, you suffer for a minute, but then you feel like like you're here, yeah, you know? totally. You don't get this high from coffee or whatever. You just, like, yeah. you feel so alive. And uh, there's also health benefits to it as well, you know? Yeah. You see athletes, like, doing uh, ice baths to recover their legs quicker and stuff. So mm -hmm. we do it the natural way. Just go to a lake, jump in. Did you say you had a trainer? Like, is it like a trainer for your physical health, your skating? Yeah, a friend of mine, uh, Diana, big shout out. She's like been a big part of, uh, you know, helping me stay fit and recover. And uh, yeah, I just started going to, to improve my overall physical, 
mm, ability to doing like just like uh, training sessions twice a week, for example, and then we just made a better uh, connection. And now she also helps me with like if I have a I don't know a, a hurt muscle or something to get back in place to give me exercises to do. Also, uh, also working a little bit like a psychologist, you know, when I can explain of what's going on, she can also kind of try to calm my mind, which is. Uh, uh, also, a big part of just uh, skating and being able to be in the moment, you know, is to like uh, not wander somewhere be too present, far in the future yeah. or too too pa too far in the past. You know, it's like living every moment as this is all there is. And uh, yeah, so she's been helping me a lot to just uh, give inspiration. You know, because sometimes with injuries you can also get mentally a little down, and then it's, it's super important if there's somebody to kind of maybe give a little. Uh, helping tip to kind of keep moving forward and remind you that, hey, it's going to get better if you consistently put in work and uh, put in hope and just uh, keep going, you know? Mm -hmm. um, go going off that, because you say it's like a lot of mental uh, work that would go into like the physical work and that can apply. And I was also thinking about like you jumping into the ice and like what that takes mentally. Do you apply like meditation in some of your practice as well? Um, yeah, for sure. Meditation has also been a big part of just like uh, trying to find who I am and uh, pursuing the right things in life, you know, not pursuing, uh, I don't know, first places or, or, or sponsors or money. You know, I wouldn't be skating if I was pursuing money probably, but I try to take what's there to to be able to skate, you know, and not get frustrated with something like if I'm doing all like all the hard skating and maybe not getting uh, what I deserve. It's like such a relative thing that I would be making up. So, uh, yeah, breathing definitely helps. Mm. Yeah. Also getting in that cold water, you know, you have to be present. You, you cannot wander somewhere. You cannot be stressful. You need to be like, watch your breath be aware of like what's happening what's going on and it's, it's beautiful when you do that you know you live in the moment you because otherwise uh yeah they days uh fly by but every day is a uh, it's a blessing yeah you know so mm -hmm. sitting here with you guys is also a, mm -hmm. a blessing yeah Very you said before just what you get out of skating or like what you deserve out of skating like what did you mean by that getting what you deserve out of skating do you feel like like what do you want out of skating what like what gives you the joy that pushes you to keep doing this uh, you said, oh, it's clearly not for the money. We know that. We all know that. It's not for the money. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel it's the, it's, the, it's the right reasons. And it's always been the right reasons. It's the joy of, uh, of uh, doing tricks. But now as I get older, I also appreciate the, the value of friendships, the value of uh, relationships I can make out of skating, you know, meeting likewise people that... Uh, that really gives you motivation to do uh, more cool stuff skating related. And uh, my drive has always been, uh, yeah, I don't know. Also contests have been a big part of it. It's because I think uh, uh, contests as I look on a, as a, a show for skaters, you know, you're putting uh, a show for the spectators. It's not so much for me, it's more like a, I enjoy the process, but the bigger value is, I think, how I can make people like uh, cheer and uh, like see some cool stuff. And and for me, it's like a gift. If I if I can do this, you know, it's like a, a very humbling experience to put on a show for people. It's mm. cool. Yeah, that mentality is probably why you're so good at contests. You're not like in it. It doesn't seem like you're in it to win it. You know, you're like in it. Like I just have fun. I mean, we talked about this on the show before, too, with like past Winter Clash guests, too. Like the event, the vibe it gives off. It's not just like, yeah, I'm going in, so I'm going to win this. I'm going to take the take the, the crown this time. Like it's just having friends having fun skating. You want to put on a show for people. It's more yeah. relaxed that way. And I guess you perform better like that. Yeah, definitely. Not stressing about uh, the results, but, you know, just as well as we said, appreciating the moment and going all in if you feel like it. Yeah. Uh, I had a break for a couple of years with contests just because of like, um, trying to get my body like fully well performed, you know, you cannot put a stress all the time and not have a break. So at, at some point there was time when there's, uh, you know, I felt like, okay, there's all I need. I, I, I don't need any contest to chase. And then after some time there came a feeling when I just felt good and there was contest and I was like, 
if I feel good, I just uh, enjoy dropping in and doing my best. And uh, yeah, it's simple. It's cool. And it also makes me feel uh, very present. You know, once you, you drop in, you, yeah, you don't care yeah. who's thinking what, who's judging or who is, I don't know. You don't even think who else is kind of who you're competing against because it's truly just like a, uh, just feeding each other off with the hype and that's a beautiful part of our community and culture that it's like uh, we celebrate each other it's not like we try to beat each other it's yeah a, yeah just trying to be like the best self that you can bring to the table yeah for yeah. sure um so you had a great year this past year in 2022 the great at the blading cup you had some great parts that came out something i noticed personally about your part um is that i thought was really cool that you had some tricks like skating anti rocker mm -hmm. and some tricks skating like with bigger wheels. You noticed that? Yeah. Damn. Right? What an eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also in the last part, we did Saul, uh, my brother filmed and the whole whole crew was there. Uh, in Athens, Greece, we filmed Saul and yeah, my skate came stock with a flat setup. Mm -hmm. mm. And that idea was uh, just so people, if they buy their first skate and if it's this skate, I think it's much nicer to learn skating and uh, just the act of rolling uh, with a flat setup. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, uh, th that uh, old, the stock frame on Rossi skates, it's not the best maybe for skating flat. So mm -hmm. I had to switch it up for anti rocker. But uh, thankfully, they're releasing a new frame that I've been skating for a little while now. And uh, that feels really good. And I've never been scared to kind of like get out of what I'm used to and most of my life, I skated onto rocker, doing all the, the, the like tricks in my first, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And then I started experimenting. And now I learned flat uh, helps me be more aware of my movement and uh, maybe be more precise so I don't do kind of stupid shit. And uh, <laughs> I don't just see like, ah, oh, let's see how this works out. It's more like, okay, if I can do it with flat, then I'm kind of aware of if, if I can uh, control this trick or yeah, that's why I felt like uh, skating at Blading Cup in November. I skated flat as well and mm -hmm. uh, it worked out good. I, I, I ask because I like the idea of uh, going back and forth or having different setups for different spots, you know, because some spots makes more sense flat. Some spots like it'll be more rugged ground and, and a flat setup will make sense. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I thought that was really cool. And in the approach to that. That, that's Thanks. so hard to do, by the way, because just real quickly, you mentioned that before, too, like having two setups. And I wrote anti-rocker for the first time after our discussions. Like, kind of motivated me to do that. And I don't get how you would switch from anti-rocker to flat. They were two completely different things. I thought anti-rocker was the takes hardest a, thing ever. It takes like five minutes. I, I like have like more respect, again, for people who wrote anti-rocker because it truly is harder to skate anti-rocker, in my opinion. And, and, and it's both beautiful, and I don't even want to compare skating flat and anti yeah. uh, skating flat feels so satisfying of how freely you can just like flow on the ground and let your feet roll but then again if there's a big drop ledge and you want to go i don't know for uh whatever grind kind grind savannah yeah. or uh fast slide you're like okay anti rocker is cool too yeah exactly totally yeah. fast sliding flat is definitely scary yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like, like that's the worst one and i think it's uh yeah especially uh, with years, you just appreciate more the act of rolling and uh, the basic fundament of, of skating and uh, and flat really gives you the beautiful experience of it. Mm -hmm. I just thought, I just thought it was cool, like again to like mix both because I think that's like when you're at a pro level, it's and you're putting out sections like you did. It's cool to see just like that that applied. Yeah. But, um. So you had a great 2022. How was your experience at the Blading Cup? And congrats, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, you're taking it's all the titles. Been, uh, it was a beautiful year. Yeah, I like. I'm so grateful for everything that happened. You know, I got married. Uh, oh, congrats! With my best friend. Let's give it up. Uh, <laughs> like, like it was a true blessing. You know, I I got to organize local Gigi Fest for the for the for the culture back home, and uh, I got to travel a lot and go like, uh, yeah, blading cup, then go visit my uh, sister in America, and it was like a true blessing to travel this much and. Uh, it's been possible, you know, to live this dream with the uh, help of my sponsors, of course. I, ha I have to shout out, like, Rosies and Head on Skate that been, like, uh, especially last year and uh, last couple of years to be, like, uh, making this journey possible. So, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been good. You asked about Blading Cup. 
I, I enjoyed it a lot. Nice. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, I love California. It's like uh, coming from Latvia, it's like a dreamland, especially when growing up after first time visiting California for like SDSF at like 2008 maybe. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I would come back to Latvia in winter and almost like cry in my bed and think like, why life is so, why life is so unfair? Yeah. <laughs> and, we do that uh, in New York too. Yeah, I go to California, it's, weather's perfect, the ground is perfect, perfect everywhere. Yeah. We go home, it rains, you know, every yeah. time you see a sunshine, you're like, oh, yeah. like thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and the ground sucks, you know, you see all those spots from my early day sections, it's like, we skate what we had, you know, like brutal drop rail with no landing, we find a little piece of wood to maybe somehow kind of have a little run up to it. And uh, yeah, so that's why I love going to California, I would probably not want to live there because uh, I love Latvia as well and I appreciate more than it, more than ever you know coming out of from Latvia that as I said in 2008 maybe I, uh, I felt like it was a curse that like I'm living here in this winter when there's everything's happening in California but uh, now I really appreciate it and yeah now you get to jump in the ice cold yeah, lake rivers and you really so, like that yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'd, I'd love to go back hopefully like uh, the spring cup so cool. I'd love to stay more and film more street in California. Yeah, I always enjoy that a lot. Well, I feel like that skating that might have been hard for you in 2008, it obviously like shaped your skating. And, the, and it's, the spots that you skate in Latvia, they come across really good. Like just the way they look on film, it just looks like everything yeah. looks really tough and hard mm -hmm. to skate. And you can see how that's contributed to your skating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it made me appreciate the good stuff, you know, when we... Uh, now we have skate parks everywhere. When we were growing up, there was no skate parks, so we just had to really skate uh, tough stuff. And it's a, as I said, post-Soviet Union uh, country with like, uh, yeah, you just have to come visit and see how it is. It's much better now being part of like European and catching up with like technologies and development and having better grounds. But uh, it was brutal, yeah. So we. We didn't have small spots, I would say. We never had like a small perfect ledge where to go and practice. It was like uh, uh, at the first years, you know, my brother and I would help. We would bring, uh, we would uh, build small like P, uh, P rails and small boxes at the at the house. And the next step would be just taking it to some super sketchy handrail, you know, with some, some I don't know, a drop, some bushes, some bad landing. But yeah, and we, we, we filmed it and we loved the process, you know, even though how brutal it was. It was all we knew and we loved the experience. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it really shaped your skating. And um, you mentioned before the GG, like the ghetto games that you've been helping organize for a long time. Like, and you've been able to have some people come over to Latvia for that to attend the event. So w what is that event like and uh, how has that had an impact on the culture around in Latvia and skate culture? Uh, yeah, it's also uh, being part of the the GG Fest uh, and helping to organize blading contest, it's, uh, it's what I feel it's uh, needed for the local culture to, to, see, to see riders from abroad coming, uh, skating, and that's what helped me to actually get up, uh, get picked up by Head on Skate back in the day. At the time it was not GG Fest, it was uh, just another contest, but it was the same skate park. Mm -hmm. Probably, I don't even know, like 15 years ago or more, but I've been with Head on Skate a very long time and it's a big part of uh, opening doors and new opportunities to my career. And actually Kelso's were there like maybe 2007. Oh, I remember that, at that contest? 2007, 2006 in Latvia, at the okay, same Latvia. where Gigi Fest is happening now. Kelso's were there and it was a big motivation for me to skate like, skate like my best, you know? Like yeah. it was so rare that pros from America would come to Latvia. Yeah. Was that the picture of the you I and Sean when you were like a little kid? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> That's the contest I end up winning. And there was like Adam Żuravetski from Poland, oh, old USD Adam. pro. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think he was even competing as well. And but I ended up winning the contest and Head on Skate would ask me afterwards to if I want to ride for Head on Skate and I was like like what did I know? I was just skating and saying yes to like opportunities coming my way and uh, yeah, so Mirek and Head on Skate uh, really allowed me to uh, go further, you know. It was getting picked up by a skate shop from Poland. It was already like, wow, it's like outside Latvia and I'm like just a little kid still. And then, you know, Mirek talking with Kato when they were looking for flow skaters from Europe for REMS. That was also how the connection came about to get on the REMS. 
and uh, yeah, and the contests in Ventspils have been going ever since, and and it's just been a crazy like I don't know process of 20 years when I used to, uh, when I won my first contest there in that skate park, and then like winning bigger contests like years later, getting picked up by Head on Skate, and then uh, now doing the Gigi Fest, you know, inviting my friends, inviting pros from all over the world to come Latvia, come to Ventspils, and. Uh, uh, yeah, have a nice session in my homeland, and it's uh, yeah beautiful to see that uh, the young kids from Latvia can experience this. What kind of allowed me to yeah live this journey? Super cool. That's yeah. that's also cool that um, Sean and Colin went over there years yeah. ago. I feel like <laughs> they must have been some of the first American pros to go to Latvia, right? Yeah, the very I think the very first ones I remember also in the skate park maybe a year or two earlier was. Uh, Bruno Love, okay. oh, really? Bruno yeah, from yeah. Rollerblade, and Samo Bayats. Uh, they were two Rollerblade pros, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. So they came over the first guys, and it's a big motivation for uh, you know for me as a kid and for everybody too. Yeah. At your local skate park, like pros coming over, it just gives you a big drive to you know to keep it up. How's the scene in Latvia now? Are there like a lot of little kids, uh, or or just big scene good. in general? Uh, it's good to see that, you know, also my friend Liana is now doing more action with the inline school because it's what I started doing when when I got my first like serious injury. I didn't want to just stop skating. So I, I saw where's the possibility to kind of stay stay connected. So I started teaching kids. We started a uh, blading school in uh, mm -hmm. in Riga, Latvia, and that's been going on for 10 years now. And uh, it's just the people we need more in industry, you know, not 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 the ones that just uh, I don't know, skate or create events, but there's, uh, you know, skating can grow if everyone does a little bit of job in their little community. And that's uh, uh, that's what's happening now to see some of my friends kind of, like, for example, my friend, she's putting even her doctor career a little bit on the side to see if maybe she can, like, make it happen, like, truly doing what she loves doing, you know, skating and helping uh, bring skating to uh to to the youth because uh without new kids getting on skates there's like uh you know we have to carry i mean like present this culture of ours to the to the youth and uh, to teach kids because uh we were all kids when we started skating and uh yeah come on there's no future without kids absolutely mm -hmm. Um, you've been working with these blade schools for a long time. I didn't know you had one also in Latvia, but I know you did blading camp a lot with um, Josh, and, mm -hmm. and you do things here. Is it, is it the same through blading camp, uh, what goes on here? Like, what, what's your experience been like, and how long have you been teaching the kids for and doing this? Uh, for, like, 10 years or so. 10 years, that's a long time. Yeah, I didn't really time. find myself as, like, fully driven to be a coach or something. But yeah, been teaching kids for some time, and then I've been friends with Josh also for I think like ten years or very long time. And he fully went to do his uh, blading camp project in Malaga, which is also a incredible experience for the people all over the world to come together and live this uh, experience as we would live on a tour, going on a pro tour with your sponsors, and that's here any people can come experience kids to learn from their favorite pros and. Uh, and uh, same what happened here yesterday, doing a flight school at the Winter Clash Park. Flight school, right, yeah. Yeah, flight school is like the, the name when, when it's not happening in Malaga. Because Malaga is every summer, there's camps happening. And I go coach and, like, yeah, join Josh to just, yeah, help uh, bring this, uh, help, like, show and uh, be with the kids, you know, like, they need someone. If if someone's growing up in a place where there's not a big community, it's in, important. That's why it's important for us to be here for what Yoyo is doing, for what you guys are doing to kind of uh, real examples of of giving this uh, kind of experience to the to the younger generations. Very cool. I wanted to ask you something about uh, you mentioned your sponsors a bunch of times, and I wanted to talk about that too because. You've had head on skate for how how many years have you been on head on skate? A lot of, for, lot forever, of years. Forever, right? Maybe, a lot of years. For a lot of maybe years. Maybe from 2007. Yes, yeah, so like 15 years. Rossi's like long time relationship yeah. too. And like I feel like when you think of 
roasties, you think of Nils. Like you think of Rems, you think of like Chris Haffey or Razor, mm-hmm. you like Ryu Shima back in the day. Like when I think of roasties now, I think of Nils because you mm-hmm. had so many pro skates with them. You've been with them for so long. How has that relationship been? Like how did that start? And like you seem like you have a really good relationship about that. So I wanted to hear more about it. Yeah, I think I I haven't had that many sponsors in my career, but because when I, whenever uh, the opportunity came about and someone kind of asked me to be on a team, I've never even uh, questioned. Maybe there's a better alternative, you know. I would be like when I when I got on head on skate like Rams BHC, I would be just uh, just representing those brands, you know. If if they're the first to kind of acknowledge my uh, uh, I don't know value. And they support me, then it's like uh, it's it's all been about uh, yeah, just trying to skate and not see what else I can take from them. And of course, uh, being a kid, it's nice. And also today, if it's nice when the older pros can stay in the industry and uh, teach uh, younger kids how to approach the sponsorships and everything, you know. So so maybe big brands don't take advantage sometimes. I mean, I'm not fr- speaking from my experience, but. But in general, when kids have a potential, it's good when there's an older guy with experience who can just like really help connect and uh, and 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 yeah. And it was I'm thankful, yeah, for uh, for my sponsors. Head on skate, as I said, it was Mirek who like helped uh, as an older guy having relationship with uh, other company owners. He could just like uh, spread the word about hey, there's this little guy in Latvia. He's the shit, you know, and I, yeah, I didn't even know if he was sponsor. talking to somebody or no, but yeah. I was just skating and I appreciate he like uh, putting in a good word for, for me. And th- that's what how my Rems uh, relationship started as well. And I skated Rems for like 10 years, not even, I don't know, I, I didn't expect anything, but just being on Rems uh, was enough to, I don't know. Yeah. And then when Rems slowly kind of went down. Uh, I mean, I went down, but just like, uh, yeah, you know, away, Kato, 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 Kato away, had, yeah. yeah, other things to focus on. And I saw there wasn't really a few, like, uh, a future or support potential from, from Rams. And that all just happened at the same time when Rosie's was coming back in the market. And, uh, I was, I was there to kind of with my, uh, like perspective to try, try something else. You know, there was time when I was just like. I had on my desktop like a picture of them skate, Rosie's, Razor Colt, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try a new skate. And then, then I got sent some Rosie, started skating, uh, talking. We made a deal, and you know, I signed contract. My first contract with Rosie's in 2018, I think. Mm-hmm. So it's been four years, and it's been uh, beautiful. You know, like I've been getting a chance to to live this. To skate, to travel, you know, we're just right after the Winter Clash, we're going Valencia, the whole team, to film another uh, team project. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, beautiful to see that they're also bringing new younger kids, the, the, the people who are not officially on the team, to give them opportunity to come with us, you know, to with their favorite, like, pros, Yuto, Bobby, Ilya, you know, they're, my, they're like, best in the world they're mm-hmm. my favorite skaters and we all can get to to travel bring the younger generation and kind of motivate them you know because i don't feel like i i need to try to keep up with them anymore and yeah. uh what i can do is kind of just like cheer for them and still do my thing as long as i can you know because the uh, pro lifestyle i don't know for how long i can make it last but i'm 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 trying. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're doing all the right things, and, and you, you got to enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, uh, yeah. You're still youngish, too. You have, like, a, many, many years left. Especially the way you take care of your body. You're going to be skating until you're, like, 80. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Hurricane it's also... drop rails until you're 80. Yeah, it's also... In, we'll see how... Uh, yeah. Because I need to adapt my skating if I want to keep skating uh, for, for many years. You know, that's why... I try to approach things with more technical aspect and more fun than just pursuing like bangers and trying to impress somebody. You still go big. Those last yeah, few sections you had had a lot of bangers in them. It's, thank you. It's like <laughs> it's a little uh, pressure. I know what people expect, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give one top soul and a drop king. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Rest. I'm gonna try to challenge myself with something I haven't done. You know, because it's yeah. uh, 
just more fun and makes me realize how limitless and endless the skating world is. So it sees like, okay, even if I keep skating for another hundred years and even if my body allows me to do, I'll never be able to do everything and like reach the maximum potential or whatever. It's like so wide and, and uh, yeah. There's so many different so, ways you can go. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're all adapting our skating as we get older. I think that's the best, fit, best part about it. It's like a natural progression of the sport, ourselves, mm -hmm. longevity. We're all learning this together. Mm -hmm. And we all take notes from one another to be better and try different things. And it's working to our benefit. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I really like the team stuff that Rosie's been doing lately. Um, I really like the Portugal trip. And it's good to say, like, you, Yuto, Bobby, uh, Zach was involved in the, in the Portugal trip. It was really great a while back to see everything that you guys did in Sicily. Um, I thought you had some really great lines in there, like the really cool looking spots as well. So um, I was going to ask what the next thing is, but you guys have Valencia coming up? Yep. Uh, Sunday after Winter Clash, we're going Spain with the whole team. <sighs> so jealous. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so, cool. so hopefully it's warm and uh, yeah, we keep working and uh, creating new videos, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, bringing the, the younger kids with us as well. So, so that's, uh, yeah, it's a blessing to live this, you know. Who should we watch out for, the younger kids? Um, I'm terrible with names and... Oh, sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me off guard. No. Sorry. Um, who... stay, stay tuned for the next... Stay week. tuned. Yeah. Exactly. Stay tuned. <laughs> cool. Uh, um, yeah. so, so what was it like um, being a part of the Sodi conversation of 2022? What was, what was that like? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's cool. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? I just like... Uh, yeah, I feel humbled and like I appreciate that, uh, you know, people enjoy what I'm doing and that's it. I didn't try to push the voting too much or uh, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I didn't stress about it a lot. And I was just like, that was a big relief last year. Um, not even having a, like check marks to do, but like trying to live fully the experience and uh, putting my heart in whatever experience I go to and uh, not trying to think or focus on results of out of it, but yeah, just doing my best work. And uh, it was cool to see being like nominated top three of the one later of the year awards for sure. That's pretty cool. That's a huge one. It's well deserved too. Yeah. Like we talked about Thank before, you. You, you skating, positive impact on the community, positive outlook on life, your health, winning contests. Um, we're here at Winter Clash now, and you won 2013 Winter Clash. Do you remember? Uh, Does anybody yeah, remember? Anybody, anybody knows knowledge? <laughs> I remember something. It's 13. Okay, Freddie said yes, it's 13. What's, tell everybody, tell us exactly what it's like. Exactly 10 years ago, yeah. Exactly, yeah, 10 years ago. It's crazy. Um, tell everybody what it's like what, to win the Winter Clash, like what the experience is like, the I don't vibe, know. the energy that's going on during that. You feel, I mean, for me it was, uh, I don't know, just extremely big, uh, high on adrenaline. And uh, I felt like on my... Uh, performance was like uh, really a mindset that I couldn't like hurt myself there's just like you know there's no limits might as well just send the craziest trick you you can imagine so so it felt truly amazing you know to be like land those tricks and see people celebrating so much and the hype and the, the energy and the support it's like you cannot describe it in words and uh, it's like uh, yeah I don't even know like I was just skating. That's all. That mm -hmm. I don't even remember who I was. Who was also in the in the heats or what? I was just focusing like ah, oh, doing my tricks and just like skating. Mm -hmm. Did that change anything for you? Like anything in your skating career, your mindset or anything like that? Mm, not much. I don't think so. No, because it was like a like a process. I think I placed second year before, and then another year before I placed third in amateur, and it was just like. I wasn't even looking on a timeline or what should be next. I was like, yeah, feeling good mm -hmm. and being able to skate. So I, uh, I was just yeah, like pursuing, trying to land my uh, biggest and best tricks and uh, see where that takes me. Like, but no idea if mm -hmm. yeah that would change me or not. But for sure, some uh, like opportunities came after that. Rams uh, like uh, offered me a signature skate. Mm -hmm. So that happened. Like next year, I got. Officially on the Rams Pro, 
which was like relatively pro, you know, no contract yeah. or something, but even getting a like a pro skate from the same brand that ha like half he's been riding, who's like my biggest inspiration, like mo most mostly, yeah, I think half is the probably the biggest of all time. And then being able to receive a pro skate, like I was, I wasn't even like thinking about what numbers, how much I can make out of this, you know, if uh, what whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I was not making much out of it, but I was just like riding the wave of like uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was beautiful, <laughs> great time. Yeah, that that's like that's a great thing too to, to have like Rems, mm -hmm. Chris Haffey, it's an elite Vansons. few. It's yeah, like, exactly. It's really a, a Rems team is an, an elite club. few. Um, some of the best road mm -hmm. Rems and just some super. So to be a part of that team must have been a pretty cool experience. Yeah, for sure. It was like I was not on the Frankie, time when it know? was. Yeah, Frankie. Yeah, exactly. I was. I I think I got on after like Frankie era. Before it was Frankie, Connor O'Brien, Nick Wood, and Haffy, and yeah. those was like the the golden golden days of Rams. Yeah. And I was like the uh, the next uh, next chapter. I mean, it was uh, was Mason, yeah, and other guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some great skaters. Yo was on there too, I think. Mm -hmm. Yo Zank. Um, yeah, no, that's great. I also wanted to ask about like um, touching back on the Rosies thing with your like. It seemed like they have a lot of input on the team too, like with your, your colors of the skates and all the, these things, and with your lifestyle, your healthy lifestyle, eco-sustainability stuff, yeah, like the cornstarch skate too. I don't know if that was like your idea you pitched to them or they pitched that to you and it just worked out uh, that way. Like yeah, how does an idea like it, that come about? I would have never thought of that. Yeah, it kind of just happened. Also, uh, shout out Martina, our team manager, and uh, Marco and Alessandro, the people I work with at Rossi's, you know, they are pretty open-minded. And Martina is also trying to look or uh, the more environmental aspect of making skates and just just living. And that's also big values of my life, how I try to spend my days, you know, try to just do less harm, you know, and uh, make more kind of good stuff happen. And it's good to see that Rosie's can also try to do this. And with my uh, first uh, breeze skate to bring the cornstarch material just to somehow implement more... Uh, eco-friendly materials and uh, we also been uh, like having a big freedom of how what color we want our skates you know what we want to do with our promos and uh, and everything so it's a uh, it's good it's and I think at the end of the day it's all about the re relationship and communication with the sponsors and uh, that's how it's been with every sponsor of me you know it's like uh, a long process of creating a trustful relationship and being loyal to those people and it's the same with like you know with my family and with uh, all the homies back home. And uh, it's like being like trustful for the people who appreciate you and who, who give you opportunity, you know, and you just be loyal to them. And uh, so far it's been, yeah, great with Head and Skate and Rosie's all these years to getting to know these people even better. And that makes our kind of collaboration go more smoothly and more successfully as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Um it's really important when working with a sponsor to be able to like have a voice and part of what you're creating with the skate and feel like you're heard. Mm -hmm. I feel like back in the day, like that wasn't a thing that was happening so much like 15, 20 years ago, but now it's a thing that you see like happen very frequently. So that's really cool to hear that you have that relationship with the sponsor. Yeah. So there's a generation mm -hmm. of people, skaters who never had that input, you know, yeah. on, like what they do, like they, they had an idea for the team and like uh, the company and that was it. Like no one else had any say. Right. This is your pro skate. Mm. This is what you're doing. This is where you're going. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Also, I think the average age of a pro is uh, much older now than it was, for example, when I started. Yeah. Because when a company owner, why would he ask a 14-year-old or 15-year-old? Like, that's true. I don't know. Because they would yeah. be probably just like not coming up with a reasonable yeah. argument or whatever they would be exactly. just like ah, a little hangover from the last night and exactly. saying like yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i don't know but uh, makes sense. it's yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's different it's different age uh, and different time of blading but i think it's like the best time ever you know having you guys being here at the winter clash the community is so strong and so so kind of bond and, and so powerful at this time and uh mm -hmm. yeah i think it's uh, important to Remember the good old days, but uh, you know the the future is bright if we focus on today and we like, uh, yeah, we accept the new and we start. We we don't want to, especially online. You can see like ah, oh, back in the day it was mm -hmm. it was better. It was more like this, more bangers or whatever, you know. But uh, skating is more wide and diverse than ever before, and it's. I think we should only focus on 
what's the potential and what we can do and like yeah focus all of us creating uh, something something better for the future and not kind of being uh, stuck into the sentiment or like nostalgia it's true because skating is always evolving so like looking back and being like skating was this skating was that skating is always going to evolve and i agree i think we're at a place that's diverse in so many different ways but the skating is accessible to so many more now because it doesn't have to be this like huge stunt thing as well it could be like everything else it could be this new like swiveling around energy or like skating spots differently so that uh i really like where skating is at right now it feels like it's a really healthy place and together with uh, everything you know technology internet social media it's a completely different world than it was uh probably when you were growing up and being a being a, like just up and coming skater, you know. Now we have to use Instagram as a pros, and it's kind of part of your contract. But then it's it sucks. But then at the same time, it's amazing because you can so easily connect with the people and you know share your experience, your fans directly. I don't know, you know, call somebody on other side of the world or send a clip or answer to a comment. Like inspire people directly from your phone, and it's it wouldn't be imaginable. Like I don't know, 20 years back, 30 years back, and, yeah. Uh, it's also just take advantage of the opportunity of the technology to, of course, we need to think of new ways how to promote it, how to get it in schools, how to how to reach kids. It might mean you need to get on TikTok, but you know, also there's probably a good potential. You know, yeah, you just need to ride the wi- like the wave of this modern age and uh, adapt to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, people are watching live stream now, and it's uh, also. Thanks to technology, and uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, being able to live stream all this stuff is incredible. We have people all over the world watching. You know, here at Winter Clash without actually being here, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, thank um, you for watching, guys. Yeah, hell yeah! Thank you everybody for coming out. Thanks for. Uh, we're gonna have to wrap it up in a in a minute or two. Before we left, um, since we're here at Winter Clash weekend, what are you expecting out of the weekend? What are your? Do you have any goals or anything like that? What are you? What are you trying to take away from this? Just oh, have fun. Just have fun. I'm le- mean. This is the the highlight for me. Probably sitting down with you guys. It's no like, way. Yeah, it has to be <laughs> like now. The contest is just go with the flow, have fun, uh, see people I haven't seen in a long time, and just uh, yeah, like uh, just like celebrate skating, and uh, stay safe, and uh, enjoy the moment. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah, it's it's really cool to have you on. We've been trying to get you on for such a long time, and uh, I know we've had issues in the last winter clash because of flight school and things like that. So it was really cool to be able to get you on and and to do it live, like not yeah. on Zoom. So I feel like it's a better experience that way. So thank mm-hmm. you for joining us. Um, before we let you go, because I know we have some more things coming up and more events planned for the day, um, do you have any parting words, shout outs, or things people you want to thank before we let you go? I mean, for sure. It's, uh, I don't even know where to start, but uh, once again, thanks to my sponsors, Rosie's and Head on Skate, for allowing me to be able to live this lifestyle right now. And uh, shout out to my family, my brother, my wife, my, my mother, father, grandma, uh, my nieces, you know, there's, there's a new life in our families. And uh, it's it's the family support that's always been there that you can count on that's also made me who I am to made me like appreciate uh, the real values in life you know like respect loyalty uh, kindness and all this stuff and that comes from my family so that's the biggest shout out for sure and then it's all my homies the rolling crew from like Riga that I grew up skating you know especially like Kaspers who's been taking most of the photos of me throughout my career and uh, yeah Liels sveiciens visiem braļukām, mašūkām Latvijā, kas saprot latviešu valodu. I hear you, man, I hear you. I just had to throw in some Latvian in there. and uh, <laughs> It's just, ah, who to thank. You, every little, like, every single fan, like, on social media or in who's been purchasing products with my name on it, you know, it's what makes it happen, what makes, uh, allows my sponsors to support my career and, uh, it's all the support. Thank you guys for having me here and for having this platform where I can learn a lot from, from history and know our roots. And that's, uh, you know, we need to celebrate and appreciate the people who paid the way for, for, for us, for me to be here. And uh, it wouldn't be possible without them. And uh, yeah, thanks to all my people. Thanks to all the fans. Thank you guys. And, uh, and uh, yeah. 
I'm I'm trying to read some uh, sign language from my wife and, and I'm just <laughs> like she's the best. I love her so <laughs> and I thank her. She's the biggest support and uh, like thanks to all my friends who I skate with, you know, who are part of the team and the Rosie's team, the Head and Skate team. Tomo sitting here in the studio as well. Shout out brother, can't wait to skate with him and uh, and it's just yeah too many to thank but i i i hope you know who you are that's been like by my side supporting throughout all these years and giving opportunities so awesome I appreciate man. It. thank you thank you so much for coming on the show it's a pleasure thank you for being here thank you everybody for watching um thank you everybody for watching live stay tuned there's a lot more coming up from winter clash and we'll catch you all in the next one thank you. later thank, thank you. you thank you